Hey guys, Ken Sunny Seven Stowe back. Had some paperwork and some phone calls to make before I took off, so there was no point in recording that. So we're headed out. Uh, it's gonna be a short one. Um, probably gonna record until I get up to um, my fuel stop, and uh, that'll probably be it. No idea what I'm going to talk about, but most of the time I don't, so I'll figure out something. Yeah, the windshield's freaking filthy. That's nice. Hey, look! New windshield squatters that actually get all the way to the top of the window. What an amazing technological innovation. They put new uh, squatters on all the trucks. These work much better. Actually, fling it around, and it. Although that side doesn't wipe so well, but. At least the liquid gets all over. Works pretty well, actually. I like to clean the window thoroughly, get it down to the bare glass, strip it down, and then uh, put some Rain-X on it. Um, the Rain-X is kind of nice. Um, actually, it's, I'd rec recommend that with any car, quite frankly, but you got to clean the glass really, really well. A couple of layers of Rain-X, and make sure you polish it off really well. Um, I find those blue shop rags shop towels you can buy the disposable blue ones they work pretty well at getting that stuff off otherwise you end up with a haze if you don't clean it really well um, but the nice thing about the rain -X is if you get it on there good and thick um, the bugs and stuff don't stick to the windshield as badly and a lot of times you can get them off with the wipers uh, whereas usually that just smears it around even more the other thing I found is in the winter time with the rain -X, that the ice and snow doesn't stick to the glass as badly, and it tends to peel off more. <laughs> I had a funny thing happen. I don't know why I'm thinking about it now. It was, uh, last week I drove to Wintersville, took a box van. I haven't pulled a box van and know two years pretty much and I discovered something that was somewhat distressing I can't back up a box fan for jack shit um, I've gotten so used to these trailers where the wheels are at the very end of the trailer yeah I don't worry about trailer uh, I forget the technical word for that but you know, the, the, sec the section of trailer past the back wheels rotates the opposite direction that you're turning you got to be careful about that because you can hit stuff. If I'm turning left really sharply, you can hit things over there with your tra the end of your trailer when it has its swings. Trailer swing outs or I can't remember. Well, with the wheels at the very end, that isn't that doesn't happen. And when you're backing up, the, the trailer goes, I mean, it just backs up differently. When you've got a section of trailer behind those wheels, it rotates differently as the trailer rotates as you're backing up. I, could, I got up there to Wintersville and... It wasn't even a difficult backup. <laughs> the trailers were pretty tight together, though. I will say that. There wasn't a lot of room between them. Oh, my God. I tried and tried, and then I happened to glance down, and I thought, oh, my God, there's a there's a spot down there at the end that's a straight shot, and I'll just pull forward and then back straight in. And um, that's another little tip for you guys. Don't sit there for 20 minutes backing into a spot. Just because it's a little closer to the truck stop, you won't have to walk as far. If there's a lot of open spaces at a truck stop, or anywhere for that matter, you know, you're, you're delivering to a dock, and they don't tell you a specific dock, although usually they do. Pick one that's easier to get into, um, you know, or, or if they tell you, if they assign you dock number two, and you just, you can't get in there, go back in, tell them, I can't hit that dock very well, I'm afraid I'm going to hit something, can you put me in dock such and such, that's easier. Um, so... Uh, yeah, anyway, I couldn't, I don't know what, I'm sure with practice, you know, I would, it would just come back to me, but I haven't had to deal with that, how the angle changes. Um, you got to anticipate where the back of the trailer is, but also where it's going to pivot on those wheels, and it, it, with, with a box van, it varies depending upon how far forward or backwards the trailer tandems are. 
so <laughs> it was just kind of surprising to me that I was as bad at that, you know, that it didn't just Im immediately come back to me, but, you know, I don't know, it's not. Uh, so that was kind of interesting from last week. Um, what all is going on? Let's see. In the gun world, well, not the gun world, world of carry conceal, we heard something on the radio yesterday that Kentucky is thinking about going the direction that, I guess, Vermont uh, has already done with carry conceal, and the idea being that you would be able to carry a concealed weapon in the state of Kentucky without having to go through a permit process. Um, the general idea is that, uh, let me compare the two the way that it is. Right now, I want to carry a concealed permit. So I go to the state of Kentucky and say, I want to carry a concealed permit. Kentucky says, okay, here's your, back, let's got to do a background check, got to take a safety class, uh, a skills test, and, and that kind of stuff. And then when you pass that, they give you your, your permit. I don't really have a problem with that. It's okay with me. But the way it's going to be, uh, let me get through this turn here, guys. I'm going to break this guy. He's an idiot. And then he's going to put his turn signal on. And then he's going to take 10 years to turn. Sorry, guys. That requires a little bit of concentration. you got to know when to shut your mouth and pay attention more. Feels light. Not really. Well, maybe not. The blinker's on until I get up to 55. That's just good practice, guys. If you're running underneath the speed limit, put on your flashers. good practice. Almost there. Oh wow, 55. Woohoo. There we go. Blinkers off. Tenth gear. All right, so let me try to simplify this. Currently, the way the carry conceal in Kentucky works is the citizen applying for carry conceal permit has to prove to the government that you are acceptable to have a carry permit. The way it, where they're talking about making it is that the government, the state of Kentucky, will have to prove that you are not. You will, by default, be allowed to carry a conceal permit, and the government will have to prove that you are not eligible or not capable. Um, not really sure how I feel about it. Uh, on one hand, I'm kind of for it, only because constitutionally, every human being that is a citizen um, by our Constitution has the right to carry and bear arms, to defend themselves against harm. That's the purpose. Or defend themselves against the government. And quite frankly, whether your whatever your status is, I'm not sure that that right should be taken away from you. Now, I immediately think, well, you know, what about violent fe uh, violent felons and rapists and murderers and burglars and stuff? Well, that's true. I don't really like the idea of the government sanctioning that it's okay for them to carry a weapon. However, the reality of it is, someone willing to commit murder, rape, robbery, arson, whatever, probably isn't going to give a crap that there's a law saying they can't carry a weapon. Um, so I don't really 
think it really logically does it, it matters that much. Anybody w that's willing to commit a violent crime with a gun probably isn't going to care that there's a law about against them carrying a concealed weapon. Um, and honestly, there's there's a lot of convicted felons that are not violent offenders. You know, uh, check forgery or guy, I don't know, stuff things like that. And I don't know, should someone like that be prohibited from defending themselves? I, I, I don't know the answer to that. I'm just putting it out there. Uh, it's a difficult question. The thing that concerns me more about Kentucky's new... I mean, they're just discussing this. They haven't done anything, I don't think, yet. The thing that concerns me about it more is that I live close to the border of Ohio and Indiana. And right now, Kentucky's carry permit is valid in Ohio, Indiana, and most of the east most of the rest of the country, um, all the way to Florida and through Tennessee, Georgia, and whatnot. Um, if they change it and make it a more lax... setup, that was a really bad place to stop. <laughs> There's a Can-Am spider. It's pretty cool. Um, if they make it more lax, Ohio could say, well, that's fine, but we no longer, we will no longer uh, honor reciprocally, we will not have a reciprocal agreement with you saying that your permit is valid in Ohio. And that would be a major pain in the ass for me, because I am constantly going from Kentucky, back and forth between Kentucky, Ohio, and Indiana. So, that w I would have a concern about that. I don't mind them doing what they're talking about doing. But I would like them to still have some kind of option to take a test to prove your skills and your background and all that so that you could have a carry permit valid in other states. That's the only thing that I see bad about it. It would be a real pain in the ass for me. Um, <laughs> what it means probably is I need to get my carry permit in Kentucky before uh, they change it. <laughs> huh. Although it could be invalidated after they make the change, who knows? Um, I had an Ohio permit, and when I officially moved to Kentucky, uh, they were not able to transfer it because the the current Kentucky standard is higher than Ohio's. Uh, a lot of times, if it's the other way around, um, you, you, I believe you can take a Kentucky permit and go to Ohio, and they'll transfer it. But not it, it just depends on the state what the rules are. I really need to get the hell out of this lane, but. I don't like being in this far right lane. I'm gonna... He flashed me, so I flash him back. Thank you, buddy. I do that to cars, by the way, too, guys. All you truck drivers out there. When you have a car that flashes its lights to, like, tell you it's okay to get over, to let you in, do the courteous thing and flip, flash your blinkers to let them know thank you. Um, you know, when you tell people thank you, they tend to do nice things again and again. I see a lot of truck drivers, they'll flash another truck when the truck lets them in, but when a car does it, they don't say thank you. And I think that's a big mistake. If, if um, You should say thank you to anybody that does something nice for you. It's just common courtesy. Oh, that was nice. Oh, that was a great gear change there. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Nice. So that's, on, that's going on in the news. Um, what else is happening? Um, wife picked up a 12 gauge shotgun. Uh, I did a little review on that, if you guys haven't seen that one yet. And what else is happening? I don't know. I've been, uh... Thinking about changing my job. I like working here. Don't really... I mean, you know, you and I, I've, I've spoken about the things that are kind of annoying, the schedule and the timing and all that, thing, all those things. 
But besides all that, I do like the company quite a bit. Um, they take care of us for the most part. We have good health, and actually, we have really great health insurance. Um, you know, I never had any trouble scheduling time off, and I mean, it, you know, there's a lot, a lot that I like. Um, but my wife's sister started working for a company as a leased owner operator. She's bringing home some serious cash. And uh, she just started about a month, a little over a month ago. So I want to give it a little bit more time. See, you know, <laughs> see how it works out. Um, but, uh, and I don't really have a desire to be over the road again and be gone for, you know, a month at a time. I like being home every day, but as I've spoken of before, but a lot of times the home time is not terribly useful, so probably more than half the time the home time is that I get is either I got to go right to bed and try to get up, or I'm too tired to do anything, or etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, being gone a little month at a time, I could probably, and, and you can take a load if you don't have to take a load, it's kind of up to you. She said they offer. You know, they'll offer a couple of alternative loads for you, and if you don't like it, you don't have to take it. Of course, then you don't get paid. Um, you can also go find your own load on the load dat board or whatever. But if you do that, um, it can complicate getting paid because you're working with a third party at that point, and you know, um, it might take you know a month to get paid, which is, might be okay. But if you need that money to pay for your fuel and such, well, what the hell is this guy doing? going 50 fucking miles an hour. Yeah, you need to get the fuck out of the way. Watch him jump all the way across. Wow, that was smart. Yeah, there was only a sign like way the hell back there for Cross County Highway. Fucking moron. There's no fucking way he could have seen all the way across there safely to go across. She shit like, she shit like that all the time. Anyway, so, I've been thinking about it, um, and when I say good money, I mean double or triple what I'm making. Um, take home. So, you know, do I want to be gone a month at a time? No. Would I do it to make triple the money? Hmm. Yeah, maybe. So... I want to give it some more time, let her be there for a little while, and yeah, make sure they aren't just sugarcoating the loads, you know, for the first month or so, to get her hooked in. Uh, I want to see how it really pans out. But, uh, and I'm not in a rush to leave, so, you know. Because um, I, I like where I work. I mean, I like the company a lot. I, I have no, other than my regular gripes, which is not really the company's fault, um, I really like where I work, and, you know, I like the people there, there's nothing, nothing bad about that at all, but, you know, and you dangle a carrot three times as big in front of somebody, you gotta start thinking about things like that, and, uh, it sounds like because it's a leased owner-operator setup, you know, if it didn't work out, or you want, you didn't want to do it forever and ever, basically you could walk away, um, I gotta get all the details still. I haven't really done that. Um, like I said, I want to see her. I want to see her there for another month or so before I consider it. Um, the good thing for you guys would be that I'd be all over the country, and I've I've been most of the East Coast, uh, um, but I've never been west of I-35. Um, when I worked for Schneider, we just we didn't go that far. Uh, they had people that went that side of the country, and I didn't. So, 50 miles an hour, people. What are you doing? Oh, yeah, we're in Lachlan. Woodlawn. Home of the, uh, not... Yeah, get your nose out of your car, out of the lane, you moron. He had his nose sticking out in the middle of the fucking highway. That's real safe. 
So I'll give it a little more time, but the good thing would be I'd be all over the country. She's constantly going to California and Washington State and Oregon and all over the place. And so you guys would get to see some interesting places, and so would I. It'd be kind of a kind of an adventure for me too, because I've not been west that far west. I've never been into Arizona and New Mexico and Colorado and and every you know all the Dakotas, and I've never been out there, so. It'd be kind of interesting and kind of fun. A little scary, too. You know, you go in places you've never been. Uh, but, you know, you figure it out. You have good maps. I, I would bring my laptop with me, and which I always had with me when I was over the road. I had uh, um, I had a laptop running Delorme Street Atlas. Now, Delorme was a great application for mapping. I liked it a lot for some reasons I'll tell you. Uh, it, is not how, it was not, however, a truck-specific uh, mapping program, so you had to use your brain too. You, you had to look at look at what the computer told you, look at look at a truck atlas, and make sure that it wasn't having you run across, you know, roads you weren't allowed to be on, you know, back roads or whatever. Uh, and then usually I would call the consignee and talk to the shipping office or whoever and say, Hey, I'm coming in. With, I'm a truck driver. I'm coming in. What's the best way into your plant from the nearest highway? And get written directions for the last part of it in, into their facility, so you know what to do. Um, little things like that make your life a lot easier. You know, rather than getting almost to the plant and finding out, oh, it's right over there, but I can't turn right, because you needed to come at it from the other side or whatever. Um, I liked finding those things out before I got there. I like knowing where I'm going to go, where I'm going before I get there, because uh, turning right and finding it's a dead-end alley is not a good thing in a tractor trailer. <laughs> not a good feeling. Um, so, it'd be kind of exciting in one way. Kind of an adventure. Making a hell of a lot more money. Obviously, I'd lose my medical benefits and my health insurance and my retirement money and all that stuff would go away, but um, I can go back on the wife's insurance or what I might do is go on COBRA uh, it would cost me more money, but quite frankly, my insurance is much better than my wife's. So, um, it probably cost me double or more what I'm paying, but I, that would still only make it, you know, four or five hundred a month. I pay about two hundred on my side of it right now. Um, so, it probably would double, but my insurance is much better than hers, so... You can be on Cobra, I think, for a year and a half. So that's the plan. We'll see. You know, her sister keeps telling me about all the money she's making. I think her first week there, she made three thousand bucks. Her first, her first week. You know, three thousand bucks a week. Um, obviously you gotta take taxes out of that, but still. That's about you know that's two thousand bucks take home. Um, I it'd be difficult to turn that down. So, but I'd be giving up a lot too, you know. I'd be giving up a whole lot. So. So I don't know. I'm not sure when this is going to stop recording. So I was thinking I was going to stop it uh, up here in, uh, in, in uh, Franklin, exit 36, to get fuel. But I'm still at a half a tank. So I think I might go ahead and go all the way up to Beaver Dam. The sooner I get north of Dayton, Ohio, the better. So, uh, I'm going to be hitting rush hour as it is. But the longer I wait, the worse it'll be. So, I think I'll go to B. I, I will have to fuel, though. i got a little under half a tank. I can't get to Defiance and, and unload and get back to the fuel stop before I'd be out. So, um, I'm going to have to fuel somewhere along the way. And my watch band broke, so... Normally I set a stopwatch and can easily glance at that to see what my time's at, but 
can't do that today because it broke. And I've had it for two years and it finally broke, so I've got to stop and get a new watch band. I thought about trying to mount it to my uh, 550 paracord band somehow. Make that the new watch band. I'll have to see if there's some way to do that. going to do it too. you though about the schedule sucking you know i mean last last night when i called in they're like well we don't really have anything let's call in the morning and you'll probably be off so i called in the morning and they're like well you know, you're probably off and then they called me back and said oh we need you to do a plant one it's like you know i mean it's not their fault you know gm called and changed their mind so then the company's got to try to figure out how to get it covered kind of stupid. Like I said, it's not really their fault. It's that the customers we deliver to can't find their own ass with both hands and a map, for the most part. What'll probably happen is I'll get up here and it won't fit in the, in the hopper. They're saying they need it. I think they need They think they need it. And then they won't need it. And then I will have wasted my whole day. <laughs> I mean, I still get paid the same, but, you know, it would have been nice to be home. Ah, traffic's heavy. Shit all over the place. Traffic's just all over. I really need to be in that next right lane over, but... I've got people freaking all over the place. I can't get over because that that guy's over there. He really needs to be in the right lane now. There's nothing over there. Instead, he's going to poke along right there. And that's where I need to be, too. When it's busy like this, you just got to be extra careful when you're doing your lane changes. They call it take 10. It should, should take 10 seconds. Put on your signal, you wait, you look, you start changing lanes, look some more while you're changing lanes, and then turn your signal off when you're done, and then look around you and make sure you didn't hit anybody. <laughs> you look it up, take 10. There's, there's an official procedure, but the point is, it should take you about 10 seconds to do your lane change. Um, both looking beforehand, the act of changing lanes, and then the, you know clearing the lane after you've made your change. Do it slowly. Gives you time to react if somebody else comes into your lane. Gives them time to react if they didn't see you moving. 
We've all had situations where, you know, you try to go for a lane and another car over there goes for the try to go for the lane at the same time. And when you do it quickly, you crash. If you do it slowly, you give everybody more time to react and fix the situation. So big puffy white clouds and the blue sky. Planning on getting up this morning and going for our motorcycle ride, but honestly, I just slept till about 1:30. I'm tired. Oh, I know what I can talk about. Started watching some new TV series. Uh, friends, um, we went and saw the Pompeii exhibit uh, last last weekend, I think, and uh, it was really cool. Uh, if you guys live in the Cincinnati area or Indianapolis or someplace close, uh, at the Cincinnati Museum Center, they've got a uh, exhibit on Pompeii, and they've got some really neat artifacts in there. And at the end of it's kind of eerie. They got plaster casts of dead people, um, people that were caught in the ash and were incinerated, I guess, and left a cavity in the ash, and they're able to they they fill it with plaster and let it dry, and you basically got a three-dimensional cast of where the people died at. It, that, was, that was pretty rough. Uh, you know, you got men and women holding each other and hugging each other, and just that must have been horrifying. But um, all kinds of interesting artifacts, uh, wall paintings, uh, um, frescoes, I think they call them, and artifacts, little, little, I found the small things, like needles and, and small intricate work was kind of more interesting to me. They had a key. They had showed a couple of keys. The locks were long gone. Um, but the key would, it was a ring. And it, so you'd stick your, your hand up the lock and turn it like that and the key was on the end of your ring so you wouldn't lose it. Um, water pipes. Uh, they had a box coming down. They had a section of box with three separate water outlets with control valves. You know, I kept walking around in there thinking, we think of ourselves as so advanced, and yet probably any one of us could be transported back in time to Pompeii at its height and live a pretty comfortable life. Uh, you know, they really didn't lack for anything. Uh, yeah, I mean, they're slaves, and it would have been sucked to be a slave and whatnot, but, you know, I'm just saying that, you know, they had a pretty high level of civilization um, and uh, it was cool if you get a chance to go see it I thought it was worth it. 20 bucks to get in for 20 for 20 per person um, but anyway what uh, I was talking to my friend about that uh, the rat race losers um, Chad the rat <laughs> uh, hey there's another uh, can am spider I'm seeing a lot of these on the road nowadays Um, they're selling a lot of these. That's pretty cool. Anyway, um, he turned me on to this TV show called Rome. Uh, there are two seasons that he had and gave them to me. Really good show. I like it a lot. Uh, it's visually pretty stunning. And, uh... I thought it was pretty cool. show kind of starts about 400 years in, after the birth of the Roman Republic. And it's right at the switchover point where Julius Caesar is taken over. And there is no emperor uh, currently, but uh, obviously Julius Caesar will become the emperor. Um, so it's basically the end of the Republic, beginning of the empire. And you, you, you're intricately woven into the, the lives of these two soldiers who are kind of right in the middle of everything. It's fascinating. Uh, if you get a chance to watch it or, or see it, uh, I would highly recommend it. It was pretty cool. Um, the other show that I, I'd never even heard of was, uh, it was, I guess, called Falling Skies. About aliens or something, you know, that have conquered the Earth. And uh, there, season two just started, and I'd never even heard of the damn show. So I went and found it, and started watching season one, and it was a little, at first I was kind of disappointed, I mean, I don't know, but 
it looks like it might be getting a little more intriguing as it's going along. And then another one which I started watching on Netflix, uh, season one, The Walking Dead, the zombie apocalypse thing. And uh, I've got, uh, I started watching that a, a while back and finished season one and then never got a chance to find season two. And um, I found season two on, uh, and uh, haven't started watching that yet. I've got too many things to watch at one time. So. But uh, all those shows are pretty cool. By the way, that, that Rome show uh, is not really uh, child-friendly, so uh, it's definitely an adult show. Uh, it was produced by HBO, and there's pretty much full-on nudity and uh, sex, so uh, you uh, don't want to watch that in front of the kids. It is done fairly tastefully, though. I mean, you don't actually see things, um, but there is pretty much full nudity. Um, very promiscuous society in a lot of ways. Well, come down by our standards. <laughs> well, <laughs> maybe not anymore. I don't know. Don't a sip of water here, guys. Now, I don't understand this. This car carrier next to me is empty, and yet he's slowing down going up this hill more than me. I don't understand that at all. Now, I don't understand why this fucking stupid pickup truck here is poking along at 60 fucking miles an hour. Yeah, you need to move. I love it. You, you, go, you go by people and they're looking down at their speedometer, or looking up, looking over at you. It's like, yeah, you're going too slow. Move your ass. The clue might have been everyone passing you. Including the truck go, truck going uphill. People are so freaking dumb. Pay, pay attention to what the hell's going on around you. Not that I don't make mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. But Jesus Christ. I see it every day. People just driving along, oh, 60 miles an hour in a 70, and they keep looking out at the speedometer when you go by them, it's like, you know, they don't understand. People, people in cars, that's a gen I mean, maybe that's a general statement, but a lot of people, they only see left and right. They don't think about the room that's in front of them and behind them. Like, you'll see this all the time. Somebody driving along, and they need to get in the right-hand lane. And like right now, there's this lane's completely open up to that blue car up there. And then you got the red pickup truck. They'll be right by that blue car, 
and they'll put their turn signal on, and they'll sit there, and they'll sit there, and they'll sit there, when all they got to do is back off the throttle, slow down, and then move over, or hit the gas, speed up, and, and get in front of the red truck. They don't think about the dimensions in front or behind them. They, they just think, oh, i got to get over, oh, i got to get over, and they'll wait for the blue car to do something rather than for them to do something. Speed up, slow down, make your move. I see that a lot. Now, trucks, a lot of times trucks get caught up doing that stuff, too. You know, you'll try to pass another truck, but most of us are speed limit out here, limited out here. So, my truck will only go 65. His truck, for whatever reason, is set at 64 or whatever, you know, and you'll inch by him just a little bit at a time. And I'm sure the cars are wondering why he, why we don't make the pass and get get it over with. Well, the reason is that the car, the truck won't go any faster. And, and it takes forever to make the pass. That's why I think speed limiters are really stupid. It's much safer for me just to hit the throttle, speed up to 70, make the pass, and get back over. The way they ought to do it is the cruise control will go 65, but on the throttle, this, there's no speed limit. Or make it 70 or something, 75, you know, enough that you could make a pass. That would make more sense. But the problem is, of course, these rules and regulations are passed by people that drive a desk for a living and probably haven't seen the, you know, the driver's seat of a vehicle in forever. stop and get fuel if I really needed it, but I don't, so I'm going to try to get my ass up to Dayton, Ohio, and then I'll fuel in Beaver Dam. Sometimes it's a little faster to get in and out of Beaver Dam, too. Sometimes not, but I'm way ahead of schedule, so it doesn't really matter. Whoa! He flashed, thank you. The, the, the car right in front of me must have flashed his headlights to tell him to get over. And then the truck flashed. I saw his left signal go on. He blinked his blinkers. That's what you want to do. Car let you in. Told you it was safe to get over. By the way, you don't want to just take their... You don't. Want, they flash you. You don't want to just come over because they could be wrong. Um, so you got to still make your own decision. But, you know, if you look back and it, it, it seems like you're, it looks good to you, and then they flash you that it's okay. Then go ahead and swing over. That you know that way they know you're coming over. You're not just cutting in front of them. Um, I don't understand why they got this left lane. The road is like done. I think all they have left to do is paint paint the wall. As soon as they're done with this section, they'll start screwing up something else. It's like never ender never ending construction. By the time they get it all done they'll have to start over. It's ridiculous. Dayton, Ohio is that way. Yeah, they I think they've been working on Dayton, Ohio for fifteen fucking years. They work, you know, they started up in the north and if they're working their way south and they're getting there, but for all that work, it seems like it'd have been easier just to build a damn bypass around Dayton. That'd have been the smart thing to do. I'm sure that would have cost them even more money, but... It's kind of funny, I, you know, I guess know I've been looking at, looking for a Jeep for a long time and kind of decided to put it off and... still sort of in that situation, but it's funny. I, I've, you know, been looking and looking and looking and uh, I guess you guys know I, I'd really want a WJ series uh, Grand Cherokee that's 99 to 04. I really want the V8, and I really want the Quadra Drive, which is their best all-wheel drive system. 
and I've been looking and looking, and they just, you know, I haven't found the right one. Happened to see a Overland model, which has everything in it, on Craigslist, and I was up in Hamilton helping my friend Chad, and decided I was going to take a look on the way back. Well, I missed the dealer. I, I, I drove by it and didn't see it. Kept driving south. Saw three more Jeeps. Just as I'm driving along, I was like, oh, there's one on a lot, you know. Pull in. And one day, I find three Grand Cherokees with V8 and quadra drive. They're all limited models. Uh, then I found one that's an Overland model, and then another one that's a limited. So there were like five Jeeps all together with V8 and quadra drive. <laughs> it's weird. They just all pop up at one time. Three of them, or two of them, two or three of them are 99s, which was the first year. So uh, a little a little nervous about making that choice, but uh, one of them they only wanted 3,500 bucks though. Uh, it was a little bit raggedy on the inside, but I don't really mind that. Um, it's kind of a double-edged sword there, where on one hand, if you buy a really nice, clean one that's just really gorgeous, are you going to want to take it out and beat it up in the off-road? Maybe not. You know, if you got one that's a little beat up with some door dings and doesn't look that great probably more likely to take it out and have some fun with it so I don't know the other thing is if I get if I do leave where I'm at and I go to this new job making that kind of money I'll be able to afford a much nicer newer lower mileage one um, so I may wait until I make a decision about that honestly, we don't owe much on the cars we have. You know, get those paid off first. And then maybe make another vehicle choice. And I still want one. So we'll see. Of course, one good thing about buying an older one with higher mileage you do check it out, and I mean, I've looked into the forums, and I know what to look for. I know what the problems can be. If you get one, and it seems to run and drive pretty well, everything works, and it's got high mileage, but one way to look at that is it's probably the stuff that was going to break probably already did. <laughs> Somebody already fixed it. Uh, or you got a really good one, and it, you know, don't know. I was planning on, if I was off today, I was planning on driving back up to Hamilton and take a couple for a test drive and see what it was all about. And one of them, they only wanted 500 bucks down. Uh, I think all three were buy here, pay here lots, which is not financially the best way to do it, but certainly one way to do it. checking to see that thing's still recording. Seems like it should have stopped by now. 
I'm gonna, uh, I think I'm gonna chill out for a while, guys, and we'll have to let the thing go. If something pops into my mind, I'll say something. But uh, at some point, this thing is just gonna stop recording, and I have no idea when. So I'm just gonna let you guys watch the watch what I see and uh, keep my mouth shut. So y'all have a good day and uh, be safe out there. If I don't say anything else, which I probably will. Dude, let's go. in front of this guy. Poking along, and there's nothing in front of him. Must be a newbie. Seriously, dude. Fifty fucking miles an hour, really. take off.
Dayton. Hopefully you guys get to see the drive through the construction. Ninja 250. Sitting right there. Come on, dude, fucking move your ass. This thing's recording for a long time. It's gotta stop anytime soon now though, because it's an hour from Cincinnati to Dayton, so I will say goodbye once again and shut my mouth, probably. <laughs> Not likely. I don't have my editing software running anymore. The uh it expired or something. I thought it was totally free and Last time I tried to run it, it said my trial time had expired, and 
Uh, I didn't think it had an expiration. I thought it was just free and limited. It had a limited, uh, you know, limited ability. So um, the one I'm using right now um, works okay, but not as well.
right, guys, that's about it. Um, surprisingly, it's still recording, which is kind of odd. Um, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and sign off and uh, shut down the camera. I want to listen to some music, get caught up on the news, and y'all have a good day and be safe out there. See ya.